All right, I'm going to play Seventh Continent, starting a new curse here of Seventh Continent, new series on the channel. Uh, I'm kind of trying to find another campaign game to play mixed in with uh, Gloomhaven that's going on the channel. I have played this game, I should say I have started this game two times before, I think, uh, playing the Voracious Goddess. And other things just got in the way, didn't get to finish. So now I want to actually try to get through this thing. So I'm going to play the Voracious Goddess. Um, I've got the curse cards I need to shuffle in here. I am playing with the Fear of the Devourers, the Path of Repentance, Facing the Elements, Flying Roots, and Comfort Creatures all mixed into the cards so we've got quite a bit of stuff going on extra here that's not just um, base game we've got my satchel and journal card here this pocket watch card goes along with the um, I think it's the repentance path of repentance mini expansion for the game um, we'll take a look at that real quick um, I can show you I'm going to be playing with, um, her name is Anjika Patel for this playthrough. And there's her mini and her little campfire. Um, I've got all of her cards here. She's kind of focused on hunting and fighting a little bit. So we'll see her cards as they come out. She's got a net. Um, if she sees footprints and she hunts or fights, she can get some bonuses. She can ignore the bad part of a red-handed card. Um, Perseverance is during the result step. You can choose one card that you just revealed if you're doing a hunt, a snow walk, or a music um, to put that back in the action deck and draw a new one. And then if there's footprints on her uh, terrain card, you can do this um, stealth action, and it's kind of like hunting. So put her cards in the deck. Um, spread them out here before I shuffle and we're also going to need to shuffle in these cards that are from the Flying Roots expansion. Uh, the Flying Roots when they come out they go on to your terrain card and they're pretty benign if there is not one out there but if there is one on your terrain card and you draw one of these cards um, the action is just an automatic failure. So you don't really have to worry about it too much unless there's already one on your terrain card. I've ran into those the last couple of times I played through. Let's get these clue cards in here. Now I do have quite a few of the cards sleeved. I have the, the ones that get shuffled the most often sleeved. Um, and if I recall, there was like a guide that I think I found on um, BGG that talked about uh, which cards you should sleeve based upon the ones that get shuffled the most. So quite a few of the terrain cards are not actually sleeved because you don't need to shuffle them or anything. They just come straight out of the terrain deck there. Not really a deck, but the terrain or the exploration, I uh, not even exploration cards. I think the white cards are technically called adventure cards. I think that's what they're called is the adventure cards. Might be the adventure deck. Might be what it's called. All right, and now let's give that a cut. Put that into the action deck area. So let's take a look at the pocket watch. Let me move the miniature here just real quick. So the pocket watch is you store this in the satchel and journal card at the beginning of your adventure. Every time at least one character performs the rest action, take a 500 card during the consequence step. So if you're ever going to be doing the rest action, we will take a 500 card. I do have the special satchel thing that came with it. I'll put up most of the satchel and journal cards in here, but um, I'm not going to put like the experience cards and stuff in here because those you have to take back out. I'm only going to put the stuff that's probably going to stay in our satchels through the entire time, um, including the actual satchel and journal card. So playing 
with just one character. We can have four green cards, five blue cards, and four items with four um, pieces to the item or three upgrades on top of the base item based upon this satchel and journal card that we've got here. All right, I'll put that in here. I don't think we're going to need to reference that too much during the playthrough. Um, I'll probably leave the Voracious Goddess clue card out, but let's just read the flavor text here. Since you returned from that expedition, the vision of a strange gloomy idol that seems to be calling you has been haunting your nights. The piercing cries of a few seagulls pull you out of a deep slumber. They sound so strange, as though they were laughing. You try your best to understand. Where on earth are you? How did you end up in this place? Your memories are clouded and you seem unable to remember. While sifting through your journal, you come across the handwritten sheet, upon which something that looks like a root was drawn, along with several statues. As, as it so happens, one of the statues looks exactly like the idol from your restless dreams. So begin the adventure by putting um, the 10 card out into play, and each player places their figure onto it. So you've probably seen this curse before, because this is the one that everybody starts with, but here's the map. So I've done that starting island before, and I think I have climbed up. Let me see if I can point to it. I think I've climbed up that. And I actually, I've, I do remember making it to this thing once before, but I was not able to finish uh, the actual, or to lift the actual curse. Um, that was quite a while ago, and I was actually playing that time with uh, my daughter in... Um, yeah, we did not, we were not able to finish that. All right, so I've got the clue card there, and I'm going to try to stop off at all these little question marks and numbers um, that are on here to see what's there. So Angika Patel, let's read her. Angika Patel is an orphan from the Bombay slums and was only seven when she fled to the wilderness of southern India. She became a hunter through necessity and developed incredible tracking skills. Her talents quickly led her to move to larger and more dangerous prey. While on a tiger hunt organized by an English lord, she saved the life of ethologist Harvey Milton, snatching him away from the animal's claws at the very last moment. The eternally grateful Milton took her under his wing. Now, several years on, they have left the bustling, polluted streets of London to take part in a mysterious expedition. So her special here is you can discard one card with the keyword stealth from your hand, or your inventory to choose one card with the keyword aggressiveness in the discard pile and add it to your hand. All right, so I'm going to try to keep my hand um, down here and I'll keep my items that I've crafted up over here and we can build the map um, over here. Um, let's get my figure. Oh, we didn't actually look at the card here. So this one says, thick columns of yellowish smoke rise up from cracks in the volcanic rock. To the east, the peaks of a rocky cliff look down, mocking the ocean below. And we'll try to take a look at the terrain cards. I'm not going to put every single card that we get, like as far as exploration and stuff, up on the screen, but we'll take a look at some of the stuff as we go. So we've got stone as an item here. Uh, we can do that and investigate thing to look at um, 005, and we need to put a couple exploration cards out to the north and to the west. So I'm, I've got the number one exploration cards here. We'll just give them a shuffle. I'll probably just keep these out of the box for now, because I think this little starter island area is all um, exploration number one area. All right, that's, that's good enough. So we put one up there and one right there. So a couple other notes. I'm going to try, even if it's not like a spot to stop and save, I'm going to try to keep these videos to maybe like an hour-ish. We just kind of see how the flow of it's going. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, do hit the subscribe button, the thumbs up. And do comment down below if uh, you've played this game before, what curses you've done. 
any tricks, tips, hints, and always if I make any rules, goofs, or mistakes. I do have the discard pile container here too that also has another action on it. Um, when you see a grave, there's two that you can choose from. You can either choose to play with this side or this side. I like this side because when you see a grave on your terrain card, you can pray. It's locked, one card with one star, and you can discard any number of cards with the keyword will from your hand or inventory. And then for each discarded card, you can take two cards from this discard pile and put them back into your action deck. So it's kind of like a way to cycle cards back into the action deck. Um, if you fail, you have to draw 666. Six, six. And I don't remember exactly, but that just doesn't remember exactly what it is. It just doesn't sound good. Okay, so I think um, this is kind of like a freebie here. I've never actually uh, gone all the way up that. I think I'm just going to start exploring. And I'm going to probably start by going up north. So let's take a look at this exploration card. Oh, migraine. Your head is pounding. Closing your eyes and taking a short rest would help ease the pain. Immediately after this is revealed, we have this blue card with the X thing. Only the active player is forced to take the following action. Uh, draw zero cards. We need two successes. Or zero cards with four successes if the character is tired. Uh, so let's do this red X thing first. We've got one card in our hand. That's a red card. So we have to discard a card from the action deck because of that. Um, so if I succeed at this, I get to banish this card. If I fail at this, I have to return it back into the cards. I've only played a couple of times. I've never seen this card before. Uh, and if I do the rest action, I'm going to have to draw one of those 500 cards because of the pocket watch. Um, I mean, we could we can get some cards into our, or we can get a card into our hand. So just to walk through an action, we don't have any items to use. The cost I'm going to determine, I'm going to draw two cards. Um, and then we draw them. So one, two, reveal the cards. One, two. So not a great start because we've already drawn a Flying Roots card. So we will, uh, this says, when this is revealed during the result step of an action, if there is at least one Flying Root figure on your terrain card, this action is a figure, so there's not one there. Otherwise, during the consequence step, put one Flying Root figure into play. If one is available, move one that's already in play on your terrain card. So we only got one star and we needed two. So we fail. So this gets returned back into this deck. Um, so we would go to the skill step where we get to pick something. We're going to pick this rudimentary flint, put it into our hand. Then uh, we discard other things, and then we get to the consequence step. So we have some things to do for, because of this in the consequence step. Put a flying root onto our terrain card. And then we take an 861 card from the adventure deck, if available, and discard this. So let's look for 8. 61. There's only one. It says, the plant is floating in the air and its trailing roots remind you of a bridal train. You notice the pustules at the top are spluttering. All right, so this is something that goes into our satchel and journal because it's going to give us some actions we can do when we see uh, flying roots in the future. Move it over a little bit. Take the following actions only if there's at least one flying root figure on your terrain card. 
Uh, we can do, I think that's a stealth action or like an observe or something. Be stealthy, hide, yeah. Uh, at a minimum of zero cards with one star. That's when you get to move the, the flying root away. And I remember trying to do that one quite a bit because I didn't want to redraw into another one of these cards to have an automatic failure. So move one flying root figure, yeah. If you want to take the following action, I have to discard a Serenity or Stealth card. And that's kind of like inspecting it and I guess learning more about it. Um, I don't know what 829 cards are, but then you get to remove it from the terrain card. So that's going to go into our satchel. It's not going to come out during this playthrough, so I'm going to add it to my actual physical Seventh Continent satchel here. And this is really cool. It's a nice touch when they added this as a add-on. Now we actually need to get the card that we were exploring up onto. There's only one 007 card. And I don't know if I have... You can kind of see 007 there. Further to the north, the terrain slopes steadily down to the water. So let's take a look at this terrain card. Yeah, so there is kind of like a little statue thing up there. I don't see any hidden numbers on here. There is that body that's over on the right-hand side. And there's an investigate thing we can do up at the top. I have played this island before, so I'm not going to do any of the investigating things that I think are just um, going to cycle through the deck uh, maybe a little quicker than we need to. Like that investigate up there at the top I think is a little bit of a red herring. Not sure. I don't know exactly, but I think it is. So I'll put that there. Now, I don't want to I think I am going to it before I leave this terrain card and go up here even though there is a flying route here I want to open up this map tile so that I can move easier over to it when it's time to leave because um, this up here only connects back to the one that we're already on so I'm gonna check this out over here Dead plant. A huge plant lies on the ground. One of its pustules has burst and a greenish liquid is seeping out. It sounds like uh, one of these flying roots. This is actually a cool card. I've never seen this one before either. I keep saying that like I've played this game a hundred times. But if I was trying to craft something here I would give me access to leaves, vines, and poison, actually, which is interesting. Poison from the, the flying roots, I guess, lets you learn that these things are poisonous. So I don't have anything to craft, and I kind of need to get this terrain card out. And this does have the, uh, for zero cards and zero stars, I can just banish this so fortunately I'm just gonna get it out and banish it and then we need card nine there's only one of them the ground is totally barren here in fact the only vegetation among your surroundings are clumps of red seaweed clinging to the rocks plumes of yellowish smoke spurt from the ground from time to time swirling around a dead seagull which doesn't sound like a good idea to look too closely at the seagull. I don't see any hidden numbers or anything here. We've got the rock stone resource here again. Okay, nothing too spectacular going on here. But I did want to get that out just for faster travel a little later. And since we have gotten that out, Put our exploration cards down there. 
All right. Um, so I want to move up here, and it's going to cost one to move off of this card. We don't need any successes. We just need to draw a card. But we do have room in our hand to add it. And all right, we've got two fire making items in our hand. All right, so we could move up here. And I want to investigate this body over here. It's uh, zero, zero, so I don't need to draw any cards. I know you could, this it, This is kind of an opportunity early at the game when you have these zero plus, where it allows you to draw more than one card when you need, don't need any successes. You could try to draw into some items. I don't know how good of a strategy that is. Um, so I don't know if you're a seventh continent um, veteran and you know if that's a good way to get built up at the beginning or my worry is that it starts cycling through your action deck, maybe when you don't need to. But anyways, we need an 11 card. Yes, 11. So there's one here. And it has stuff on the back if you had a special curse, but we don't have that purple um, banner symbol on any of our stuff. So this says, a man is lying face down among the rocks. Approaching closer, you notice his clothes are torn and tattered and his body is swollen and puffy. Parts of the body are mutilated and the man's skin bulges with what looks like large eggs. It's kind of an interesting art. I, I know I said I wasn't going to put every single card over here, but I mean, they did a pretty good job with some of the stuff. I mean, those really look like eggs hanging off of them. So we can investigate this, uh, drawing one, at least one card for zero stars, and we get a card 31, and then return this card to the box. Okay, so I'm gonna I am gonna do that. That's why I came up here. So we have to draw one card. Uh, learn by doing. You may discard this during the cost up of an action you're involved in in order to apply the following effect: minus three. Okay, and we can just put that one immediately into our hand because there's only one skill card to choose from. All right, so we need card. We need a thirty-one card. And there are two. So maybe we'll let fate decide odds and evens. So we got even, so we'll do that one. And we'll return that 31 to the box. And this one is, the waves violently pound the rocks, splashing your face with sea spray. You inch towards the body along the slippery rocks, trying your best not to fall into the water. So now we have a balance action. We have to draw at least one card and we need three successes. You manage to keep your balance. Take a 0-3-2 card from the adventure deck if, that, if applicable. Discard this and replace it with 139. So we need to make sure that we succeed at this. So this card 11 gets returned to the box. And that goes there. Three successes. I know there's a probability chart. I feel like we need to draw like three or four cards for this. Four cards would give us a 65% chance of succeeding. Now we don't have a flying route on our terrain card here. Don't have anything that's going to give me any stars here. I should have crafted this when I was at the stone. It would have been free. I'll know that when we move down over here for next time. When I get up, yeah, when I get over here. Anyway, so to this, 
I don't want to fail this. I do not want to fall in the water and take a 102. I don't remember what 102 is. I think it's tired or injured maybe. Um, but either way, it's probably not good. So I'm going to draw four. And see what we get. So that's one, two. All right, so we got four successes. Ooh, and now I have to choose. So I passed, but now I need to choose what I'm going to keep. I've already got to learn by doing. And Lucky Star is kind of the same thing. So I've got Deadfall Trap, which is going to help in hunting. And I don't know if she needs help in hunting. But Walking Stick is pretty good. Maybe not for now, but I know for later when we're going to get into some rougher terrain when we go into the other island. Oh, the Deadfall Trap is really good for hunting. It actually helps for resting too, I guess, because you know you're going to be safe. We're going to take the walking stick. I think it's too good not to keep. So I think we've got space for one more. Yeah, we can have five blue cards in our hand. So Deadfall Trap goes in there. And now we need 32. Thirty, 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 thirty-one. There's only one thirty-two. Now that the danger has passed, you search the body, wasting no time. And we found the metal gear wheel. And it does have one of those little banners on it. A small metal gear wheel found on the body of a naval officer. So that'll be part of our satchel and journal. I'm going to keep this one out, I think, though, because hopefully we won't have it for too long. Uh, so then we discard this and replace it with a 139. So I will discard that and go back into the box. One thirty-nine. Judging by the insignias on his jacket, this man was once a French naval officer. Despite being worn and faded, you can still make out a name. FT-16 La Rochelle, probably the ship to which the man was assigned. Unfortunately, there is nothing else worthwhile on him. And then the FT-16. If we take a look back at our clue card, there's FT16 and then like some arrows that are like a little trail with an arrow pointing towards the left side of this little starter area. So a little clue at the beginning on which way to go. Okay, like I said, I'm not gonna do that up there. And the reason I wanted to open this up over here um, is because now I can move in just one movement all the way over here because you, you don't move um, terrain card by terrain card. You can move across all the cards that are that have been revealed as long as there's not something um, that's like an event in the way that blocks movement. And we'll see one of those. I remember somewhere over here there's one of those, and it might actually even be um, right here. I don't remember for sure. It's been a little while since I played. So it will move, it's gonna cost a card from the deck. Perseverance, so this is her her special card that as long as I have this in my hand, um, if I'm doing a hunt, I think that's just like a snow walking, snowshoe or ski, and then a music action. I have my little uh, handy dandy helper here. There's so many actions with so many names. Actually don't even, yeah, play music. So she's a good hunter, she's good at skiing, and she's a musician, apparently. So now our hand is full. Uh, we did that We did that successfully. 
with my hand full, I'm going to, since um, stone is available as a resource here, and you can't see it entirely, but the stone reduces the cost of this by one, so it basically makes this free to craft. I'm, I'm gonna craft that as our first item, and we've got one use on it. Be good to make a fire with that if we get some food at some point, um, cook it up, get some cards back out of the discard pile. All right, so now that we're here, I wanna take a peek at this seaweed. I think this is the spot where the we get a, a good card from the seaweed. Um, and I'm not too worried about spoilers because this game has been out for so long. If you're watching this, you've probably played this game before. Uh, and there's tons of other videos out there that play especially this curse. Um, oh, that does also remind me, I had this out to uh, play and I was getting the um, thumbnails and everything ready. And then I saw that a little, a little while ago that Seventh Citadel is coming out on um, Kickstarter in about a week or so. Sometime next week, I think it is. So I'm excited to see how that how that looks because obviously I kind of went all in with um, Seventh Continent here. Okay, so anyways, we're gonna do this in this little investigate thing up here. We have to draw one card. Knowledge is power. You get more experience. So this is the one um, to take uh, experience to get experience points. I don't really know how valuable that is because you have to take a card and get exactly one star. Um, I mean, it's cycling one card out of the action deck and I guess maybe into your hand. I actually don't know. If you, if you think about the steps, This would be interesting. This is an interesting question. If I'm going to do the action from this card, I'm not really playing the card out of my hand, like as if I was making an item or something. But then I get to draw a card from there. I guess that's just the card that I discard, maybe, to make to make the spot because my hand is currently full. Oh, you go to hand size limits the last step, so you get to do the consequence and then figure out the hand size limit. So they thought of everything, right? Okay, so we've drawn the one card. We didn't need any successes, even though we did get one. And we look for card 34. Bright red seaweed is clinging tightly to the rock. Perhaps it is edible. You tear a piece of seaweed and give it a taste. As soon as your tongue starts to tingle, you spit it out immediately. However, it's flexible and a strong stem might prove useful. Immediately after this is revealed, take a 029 card from the adventure deck if available. So that sits right there, and we take card 29. Yeah, and then this is a special card that's going to go into our satchel, and that's just going to go into the. Uh, um, the big satchel, the permanent satchel. Try to position this a little bit better. There we go. The stem of this red seaweed is both flexible and strong. It could easily be crafted into some nice cordage or as a component in other equipment. So when this seaweed can be seen on your terrain card, you have the vine resource. Unfortunately, I don't have anything right now that needs vines, but it's always nice to have that flexibility. Knowing that if we see seaweed, we have a free resource for crafting. So I don't know and I can't remember for sure if there's any other things. I know there's lots of repeat plants and things. I've seen lots of repeat plants on some of the terrain cards, but I don't remember getting any other uh, cards like that. I'm sure they're out there. I just haven't seen them in the deck. So that would be kind of cool. Okay, so 
I think this is the place that we need to go ultimately towards the end of this little starter island area. So I'm going to investigate down here first. Thinking ahead, you take some time to ponder your possible options going forward to survive in this hostile environment. One involved character may discard one card with the keyword will from their hand or inventory in order to obtain one star during the result step of the following action. Um, Eureka, I've got it. One involved character may choose one blue hand card in the action deck or the discard pile and add it to their hand. I can take any blue card, blue hand card. Oh man. Um, what do I want? Uh, I'm gonna discard this learn by doing, I think. No, maybe perseverance, it's will. The learn by doing seems pretty good because you get to reduce something, a cost of something by three. I get to take any card from the action deck or the discard pile and add it to my hand. There's got to be something pretty sweet that I want. Something else for hunting. Or actually, since I have the vine resource, do I want the rope? I know the rope is pretty useful. I'm going to discard Perseverance, and I think I'm going to look through here for the rope. I'll take a peek at other stuff. I don't need knowledge is power. The net would be really good for hunting to reduce the cost. And it would be free because I have vine and stone where I'm at right now. Torch, woven basket, predator. Um, that helps her hunt where there's footprints. I don't need another fire making kit. A couple of curses. Blowpipe helps in hunting. No thinking. These automatic success cards are pretty good too. That's two automatic successes. I think there's another two automatic success card in here that does not require the one automatic success that doesn't have any like tired stats or anything. But I know we have to climb up that that ridge. At least I think we do. And it's free. I don't know, maybe this isn't the best thing to take. The bolas would be free too, and it's really good for hunting. It's only one use though. Because uh, we get four uses out of the rope, and if we can chain it with other stuff that has the keyword skill, and I don't really know the cards well enough to know if there's other things that are good that have the keyword skill. I just remember, and I might be remembering it incorrectly, but I remember trying to get up that, that cliff that's shown on the map that we looked at at the beginning uh, can be kind of hard. And if you have the rope, it's very helpful. Okay, so this gets discarded. And we need card six. All right, so card six says, there's no smoke here, some moss and even a few bamboo, like canes grow in this area. Oh yeah, there's bamboo. There's bamboo down here. Yeah, so this card here has a couple of things going on. It talks about that bamboo, and I don't know if they did this on purpose, but it kind of draws your eyes right to that area of the card where then you can see zero 
one four. So I think this is like the first card, at least for this curse in this starting area, where you have a uh, card with a secret number on it. So once we see that, we get rid of this card. We'll just discard it into the past for now, and we take the card number that we saw. So that was zero, one, four. There's only one of them. And it's got a little thumbs up uh, with zero, zero, six at the bottom, letting you know that if you came here from card number six, then you uh, did something right. Uh, so what that opens up is now there's a new investigate thing by the bamboo over there. Um, there's also, I think the magnifying glass, yeah, the magnifying glass is search and the eyeball is spot and observe. And that spot and observe is right by those animal tracks. Oftentimes when you see those animal tracks, there's some hunting at least somewhere close by. And then see, there's a bush over there. I've seen that bush on other other cards. There's also some seaweed down there. So there's, um, there's vines down there that we could use to craft as well. All right, so for now, we're still just getting this out here. And that was a long explore. And we need another um, level one card there. So before we move off of here, uh, I just I want to make some room in my hand. Crafting the rope it costs three cards. You don't need any successes, but it's three discount if you have vines. And I've got red seaweed. So we're going to make rope as our second item, and that starts with four charges on it. All right, so I don't really remember if we get anything special from looking at the dead seagull by the gases. I don't want to get close to the gases. It just, in a game like this, doesn't seem like the wisest idea. Of course the game could also reward bravery, but I don't know about that. I guess I should investigate this just in case there's another terrain card so when we move away um, there will be um, more space that we can cover. So let's take a look at this exploration card here. It says, lunch. A plump seagull is hopping around just a few yards from you. If you're a vegetarian, just ignore it. And it's locked at one card with two successes. We draw 001 and banish this. If we fail, we just discard it. Or we can just go on our way um, and discard it. One card for two successes, and it's locked, so I can't draw any more. And I don't have anything out here to help me with hunting. I don't, I don't like the chances of the return on that. Cycling through another card, trying to get two stars, um, just doesn't seem like a good risk-reward scenario. So I'm just going to discard that card. And we will pull out card 15. The terrain is split in two by a small bay. Yeah, so this one has, uh, this is the one where we have to balance across the rocks. So we're gonna have to move back up to this card after we finish down here anyway. All right, we have to draw one card to move down. So let's do that. It's a think. We can randomly take up to seven cards from the action deck and we can add one to our hand. 
Um, you must shuffle the other cards back into the action deck. All right, so that lets us move down there. We've got five cards in our hand. Um, let's just do this investigate or search examine doesn't cost any cards we don't need any successes and we take card 16 there is something in there following the scampering crab you notice a gleam at the entrance to the hole you crouch down and reach into the hole to take the object and this is the other uh, gear wheel that we need to successfully get off of this little starter area. I actually remember the one and only print and play thing that I've ever done was during this campaign, I think it was actually during the campaign, they had print and play files for this starter island. And I remember printing that out and and playing it all right so uh, what else can we look at here we've got free vines and free bamboo but nothing that we need to craft although we could do this think and see if there's something that comes up that we can craft so let's do that uh, so we randomly take seven cards from the action deck. And j from the top is good enough for me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's see what we get. Ooh, look at that. Three curses that are going to get shuffled back in. Hey, remember a blowpipe. Pan pipes can be crafted for free. It's music and serenity. I don't really know. It actually will help us automatically make fire. But the blowpipes, or the blowpipe, is going to give us two stars when we hunt. And it's free because we've got bamboo where we are. So I'm going to take blowpipe into hand and these six get shuffled back into the action deck I don't know what these cards would look like if if this action deck wasn't sleeved I mean there's so much shuffling oops back and forth of all the action cards and then if you had a character that you you hadn't played with before and you put their special cards into the action deck they'd probably look all nice and pristine and pretty all well, the ones that you'd shuffled 500 times before that are all white edged and messed up corners and stuff all right so i think uh we'll just do this craft action because it's free so we've got another item out here. We can just put it here for now. With three uses. I'm gonna move our island over a little bit. Was that the show Lost where the island moved? Spoilers, I guess, right? And the show's 15 years old at this point, probably. Is it too early for spoilers? All right, so let's do this um, spot and observe here. We have to draw a card. Uh, yeah, there's nothing else we need to craft right now. So we got to remember, so this is choose one uh, blue-handed card in a discard pile and add it to your hand. You could use a remember to get that think back. Is there something else in the discard pile we want? Oh, perseverance maybe. 
put it back in our hand. Hmm, that might not be too shabby because then we can, when we hunt, well, we don't need to decide right now, right? So that was the one card. Now we need card 12. From the few tracks you spot on the ground, it seems that a small animal was recently here. Yeah, so now my hand is gonna get in the way of the island. We've got room for now to put our hand up here. You hide and wait in silence. So it's locked, but for two card draws, we need at least two successes we can hunt. Um, learn by doing, you can do a minus three. I actually do think before we do this, I'm gonna use this remember card to get the perseverance back because we're gonna hunt. If we don't like one of the cards, we can put it back and uh, draw a new card. So let's play the, we'll do the think action on the remember to get our perseverance. And I probably wanna make some room in my hand We'll see. I don't know how valuable knowledge's power is right now, but I can always discard it if there's something else that comes out that's nice. So we're going to do this hunt. I am going to use an item to get two stars to start with. And then we got to draw two from here. So we got Think and this Curse card. I'm gonna use the Perseverance power on a hunt. During the result step, you can choose one card you've just revealed, shuffle it back to the action deck if you've not revealed it, and then I can draw another card and add its successes to the hunt. Because right now, we are at a total of uh, three, because we've got two from our blowpipe and one from here. We're at three and a half, so if we draw a left half from here. Okay, so let's replace that card. Ah, we got a left half. So we got another knowledge's power and a think. Uh, so we got one, two, three, four successes. I'm trying to do this exactly in order. Um, skill. So now I choose. I th I'm going to get rid of these knowledge power cards. I know the discard's not till later, but I'll just do it now. Get them both back in there. And then with four stars, we get to take two zero three zero cards. How many of these are there? Zero, three, zero, there are three of these. We will let fate decide again. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll just roll it twice. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, that's a one, so it's these two. I'll put this zero, three, zero back. All right, so we got two stone eating crab cards. One is a take one zero zero one card, and the other one is take two zero zero one cards. So we're gonna get three zero zero one cards, and those will go into the past. Okay. And there are a ton of zero zero one cards. Probably 15 or 20 of these. We get to take three of them. One, 
two, three. Back in the box. Uh, so these are all, if we eat, uh, randomly take three cards or six if you have fire. So if we cook these up, uh, we can get six cards from each of them. And then these get returned back into the box after we do the action from that card. And all of these are food stamina. So we're going to start our fourth item spot there. Kind of a food stack of stuff. All right. And now we have to change this to the gold version of the card. Um, so that goes in the past, I believe. What number was that? 12. Gold version of the 12 card. Apparently there's not much more food in this desolate land than you have already found. You realize you'd better ration what you have if you want to make it through. Immediately after this is revealed, one involved character may discard two blue cards from their hand in order to choose one blue card in the discard pile and add it to their hand. Um, is there anything in the discard pile that I really want? Deadfall Trap could get added to our flint. And we won't be able to make it for free. But do I want to discard two cards? I mean, Think does the same thing with only discarding the Think card. I could discard the Think and another card to get the Think card. Just kidding, not going to do that. I think I'm okay. Um, I wanted to possibly craft a walking stick, but now there's no room in the, in my item area. How many cards do I have in here? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three. Don't think it's efficient yet to start cooking. I don't want to build a fire just to make one, to efficiently use one of my stacks of meat. So we will unfortunately, I don't think I want, I don't really remember needing to go this way and I kind of want to get off this starter island. I know that I needed these two gear wheels and I've got both of those already. So I think I'm just going to move on. So I have to draw two cards to move off of this terrain card. And we've got to remember and a remember. Uh, it's too bad. It's a good, good amount of successes there. Uh, I don't think I'm going to keep either of those. All right, so we're up here. Now we need to deal with this. So we need to do a balance action, drawing three cards and get a success, at least one success. I wonder um, I can apply the following effect minus three. Do I have to subtract all three of those? Uh, minus X if the involved characters use card effects and they enter inventories. I don't know if I have to subtract all three of those. 
Um, I don't know. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time looking through the rule book to try to find that rule. If you know, can you put it down in the comments? If I play this learn by doing card, which has a minus three card draw on it, do I have to subtract all three of those? Or could I elect to say maybe just reduce the cost by two or one? So I have to draw three or more to get one success. And I'm just gonna draw the three. And I really hope, I'm not even gonna say it out loud, that one of these is not a flying root. Boy, I was close to not even succeeding because we needed to get a star and I draw two curses and the shovel, which gets me the one star that I need. Uh, this is a stamina. I don't have a, st I do have stamina on the food. That's kind of interesting. I could attach this to the bottom here, and then as I ate up the crabs, this would move up to the top, I believe. And then I could add stamina to it, like more of these food cards, like hang it off of the shovel over my shoulder. Um, but since I have think, I can always get it back out of the discard pile. So I think I'm okay. All right, so I got the one star that I needed. So we put card 17 into play on the other side of this thing. So this is an example like I was talking about earlier. This would be something that breaks up movement on how many um, like terrain cards you can move through with just one move action. All right, a 30 foot long submarine is hanging from two cranes, keeping it above the surface of the water. There's not a soul in sight. And this has another one of these um, plants that I've seen on other cards. It kind of looks like pineapples up on the upper right side there. I don't see any secret hidden numbers or anything. Um, we could pray. I don't really know what that does. I don't remember that. Uh, that prey action. Um, and we get to automatically move there because we did this balance walk action. We don't have to do this uh, move thing here. The action we took was this balance action, not this move action. It's more expensive than that. What the heck? Let's do this prey. I don't remember that. So it's draw one card. Don't need any successes. So we draw a card. It's another curse. Get those out of here when we don't even need stars is fine. We're going to draw card 39. There's only one. You come across two marked graves, very likely the crew of the submarine. The ground here is very rocky, and whoever tried to bury them here appears to have attempted to dig a proper grave before giving up and covering the bodies with stones in the form of cairns. I think that's how you say that word. Uh, immediately after this revealed, take a 666 card, and after resolving it, apply the following effect. Oh, first, you meditate for a while, pondering the demise of the deceased while hoping to avoid their fate. Ooh, and then for each skull card in the discard pile, randomly take two cards from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. I believe we just drew three curses. We gotta do this 666 card first. I don't like that. At least I don't think I do. How many of these are there? And these are in sleeves. There's four of them. Hmm. Hmm. 
How about this one? Let's put the other three back real quick. Uh oh. You have apparently disturbed a tormented spirit. We have to do a fight action. And we have to do this immediately because it has this hourglass on it. I think that's what that hourglass means. It's not on that card, but I believe this means we have to do this right away. Two cards, seven successes. The otherworldly creature vanishes if we fail. The specter enshrouds you in its spectral form. Each involved character takes a 102 card for each skull card in the discard pile. You must randomly discard one from the action deck. Okay. Two draws and seven successes. And we have to do this now. We're just going to draw the two. There's no way we're going to defeat this thing. I mean, we are going to be able to put six cards back. But what I don't want to do is draw like a flying root and then make other things on this terrain card more dangerous. Right? So I think we're just going to end up with a 102 card. So we'll just draw two. Ooh, we got a bow. And then Troubled Childhood. Bow is a will card. Um, wow, we ended up getting three successes with two cards drawn. Do I want the bow in my hand? Where could I craft it into? Because it's also for fighting. It's for fighting, hunting, and fishing. Too bad there's no red seaweed on this card. Since we're going to have a stick here in a second. I think I'm going to keep this and it might sound crazy I'm gonna get rid of the learn by doing and then that would also get discarded we need to take a 102 card and there's a bunch of these because this also might make us discard cards if it has that red X up in the corner. I don't know what this one is, if it's tired or injured or paranoid or... It's not good. You learn quickly that these low 100 cards are uh, not something you want to deal with. You're freezing. If you have the fire resource, return this. All right, we'll be able to get rid of this. Uh, fairly soon when we start cooking. Um, which I actually might do. So that does have the red X with the blue on it, or the blue square with the red X on it. So we have to discard one card for the red card we had in our hand before that which was the splint. And then for every skull in the discard pile, we have to randomly... I thought we had three. Oh yeah, we do. We've got three skulls in the discard pile. So we need to take one from the action deck. Just take them from the top. One, two, 
three. Okay, so we have finally finished with this specter. We will discard him. Um, so this is what I'm thinking. So the other part of this card was it for each skull card in the discard pile. We can randomly take two cards from the discard pile and shuffle them back into the action deck. But I'm going to end up doing quite a few things here, I think, to get some cards back into the action deck. So we've got quite a few now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. And we've got 18 we can get out of here. We're about to get 6 out from that. Um, all right, so let's shuffle this and randomly take six, two, three, four, five, six. These have to get added back into this. Did not want to get go together there. All right. So I've got action deck and discard pile here. I could do the prey that's on the discard pile as well. I would need one success. If I fail, I have to draw six six six. I just got a specter. A pretty bad specter out. I'm sure that I'm not sure, but I think that some of the six six sixes are probably benign. That's only gonna get me two cards back. So I think for two cards back. No, I'm not worried about it. Um but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes, so this is what I'm thinking. I'm gonna build the fire from this rudimentary flint. I have to draw one card and get one success. I did not do it. Uh, so that's a bummer, do I wanna keep this net? No. So that gets uh, discarded if you fail. I'm going to craft this friction fire. The reason I did it was because I was kind of okay because I had another fire making thing here. And it's free because we have uh, wood now from this card on this spot. And do I want to just draw one card? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. I can get 18 cards back from cooking. Um, I'll draw two. I only have to draw a minimum of one. I need one success to successfully make this fire. Um, and exactly what I did not want to have happen. We get a flying root who's going to come out onto the card. But there wasn't one there to begin with. So um, it's not going to make us automatically fail. We did get the one success that we need. And that'll go in the discard pile. I'll just add the war paint to my hand. That was created, so that is also going to be discarded. Um, where's my fire? There it is. Get a little fire marker out. So now, uh, before I do anything else, I'm going to do all three of the, well, actually, I have a fire resource. 
So I can return this freezing state. That 102 goes back into the box. And I'm going to cook all three of these meats with the fire. So all of these will get returned back into the 001 section of the box. And I believe that's all but one of these cards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yes, 19. So let's shuffle this real quick and pick the one winner who gets to stay in the discard pile. And let it be a curse or a flying root. That would make it ideal. How about you? Nope, it's knowledge is power. All right, all of these are going back in here. All right, so a couple other things I want to do before I actually get into this submarine and take off. Oop, that card's just sideways. We've got an almost completely full action deck again. Well, except for these cards that I've got out. So we've got a free log resource and stone resource. I'm going to craft a walking stick for free because the logs are there. So we've got four uses for that. But then I also, because it's a will keyword card, I'm gonna craft the bow. Um, it costs three, but I get a two discount with wood and one discount with vine. There's no vine here. Um, so we have to draw one to learn by doing. Let's add that to our hand. And then I'm gonna tack this on here So that goes up to six. So we've got an interesting and decent, halfway decent uh, little item developing over here. Finally gonna go on to the submarine. We don't have to draw any cards to do this observe action. I think it's observe, search, examine. I'll get them right one day. Search examine this card 22. Okay. The cranes support the submarine above the water by chains attached to either end. All right. So that gets attached there. Each chain runs through a pulley located at the top of a crane. Lowering and submerging the submarine obviously requires great precision and skill. The chains do not, I say we have to do like a strength test thing. Um, it's locked. If it's locked, I don't think we can reduce it. You may draw more if the action is not locked. We can choose to apply a card effects from their hands and their inventories. So I actually could use the rope to just make this automatic. Draw no cards. Because I need one, I have to draw one card and I need one success. If I use my rope, because it has the um, uh, the like pull, push, lift is what it's called action on it. That little like muscle arm thing there. It's the same as this muscle arm with the one one. I can get minus one and one star. We've got the rope made, might as well use it. So we'll do this action here. Uh, take that down to three. It says, the chains do not break. The submarine is back in the water. Return the terrain card you are standing on and replace it with zero, two, four and discard this. Uh, so we return 17. And we need zero, two, four. Okay, we put 17 in there. 
024 says, a submarine is in the water. Now set off as quickly as you can. You never know what could happen. So this is basically the same, except the art has the submarine in the water, and it's got a new um, examine number for us, 37. All right. Plop that back down. I don't know. I don't think these things are supposed to go away when we... Uh, change the terrain card uh, and then we discard this card okay 37 we're gonna do that examine action it's only one of them stepping into the submarine you see that the former occupants apparently took anything of use yeah, so this is the um, inside of the submarine. It's another little cool piece of art for a little tiny uh, game card. Kind of see you're almost under the water already. So entering the control room, immediately check the remaining fuel. All you have to do is restart the engine, and you'll be able to leave this blasted place. So. We can do, we gotta draw one card and hopefully it's not a stupid flying root because that would make it a failure. But we do have the gear wheels that have those two little symbols and those are both plus six. So I think we add 12 to that number. If we're successful, I think we're gonna add 12. So we will draw card 33, I think. But we have to go through the motions here and draw a card and hope it's not a flying root. It's not. This is a, actually a good time to draw a curse card because we didn't need any successes. So I believe we're after card 33. And if it has a little thumbs up from card 37, which it does, we're good. The submarine's engine rumbles to life and begins to steadily hum as it settles into gear. You pull away from the shore and leave the island without further delay. The control room is cramped and uncomfortable. Despite the noise from the engines and the head spinning fuel smell, you are all too happy to be the captain of the submarine, at least for a little while longer. So, this has us doing quite a bit of stuff. We need to take three 003 cards. So that's some experience. I'll just grab those real quick. These I'm not gonna put in the Satchel and Journal um, binder. Banish the two Metal Gear Wheel cards that are under the Satchel and Journal card. Okay, so those are gone. Return all the cards on the board and in the past and then banish a green 017 card. Put into play, the active player chooses a 038 card if you head north, northwest, or a 132 card if you head north, or a 198 card if you head northeast. Each player places their figure onto it. I didn't read the flavor text. After navigating for about 20 minutes, you can suddenly make out the wild coast of the seventh continent in the distance. Luckily, the gauges indicate that you've just enough fuel to get there. So the last couple times I played, I just went straight north uh, because of the map, which seems right. Northeast I, or northwest. I want to try something different. I think I'm going to go northwest just for fun. But I'm going to stop the uh, this video here. Um, and I'll do the cleanup and the setup for the next uh, video in between. So like I said, if you saw any rules mistakes that I made, please let me know down below. Or if there was something else, some other card you would have kept or some other thing that you would have done. I know I blew through my food that I probably should have tried to save up, but I, I was already getting down to more than halfway over into the discard pile. Uh, just trying to keep my action deck kind of full there. Uh, hopefully there'll be a place to hunt 
when I get over to the next island. I've got a bow over here and a blowpipe to get me some some extra stars and some reduced card draws on hunts. We got a little bit of experience. Got a hand going, so I think we're in a good a good spot. All right. Um, if you did, again, like the video and you're not already subscribed, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, leave uh, some comments down below. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.